Hi everyone and welcome to another Sims 4 speed build. So today I have a really exciting collab with the wonderful Simarchy who is actually here with me. So say hi. Hey guys. So we are building kind of a, a little like a miniature version of Oxford Street in London because the two of us did go to Sims Camp together, which is where we met and it was actually my first time in London. Um, I don't know if it was it your stuff. Yeah, it was definitely it was my first Sims Camp and my first time in London. So it was quite an experience. <laughs> yeah, same for me. It was my first time in yeah, it was my first time to Sims Camp as well. And I was honestly like really nervous about going because I had flown only once like when I was 15 to go to Disney World. And it was the first time I had ever flown by myself. So I was like really nervous about getting on the plane and going all the way to London by myself. Like, did you have the same experience? I was really lucky. I actually got to fly with my friend, Heather, Arson Girl Gaming. So she lives a couple hours from me. She drove up here and we met at the airport and we got to fly down together. So thank God. And she had been to Sam Sims Camp before. So I kind of had a guide with me. <laughs> I got super, super lucky. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Um, like, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, though, because I, like, had all these, like, just all these worries and fears about how, like, the flight was going to go and everything like that and, like, not being able to nav navigate Heathrow by myself. But I was surprised by, like, how easy it was, and it was definitely, like, a really good, like, you know, really good growing experience for me, like, just putting myself out of my comfort zone like that and going to London by myself to meet all of these new people who all turned out to be really awesome, which I was really thankful for. Yeah, I definitely understand. Like, I was really worried about the passport because I had never flown out of the country before. So we obviously had to get passports. And I kept having all these fears beforehand that it wasn't going to come on time or there was going to be some huge issue or, you know, I wouldn't pack the right thing. I would forget an external hard drive. Like, those were the fears that I had. The flying wasn't too bad for me, though. Yeah, I had those. I had those, too. Like, I actually had dreams before we left for Sims Camp. Like, I would have this dream that I missed my flight. Or that like I somehow missed like like Sims Camp happened, but I completely missed it or like oh. forgot everything. <laughs> like I just had like all these like dreams like that of just like forgetting my passport or missing the flight and it, like just the month beforehand. And yeah, I definitely had the worries about um, the passport too, like forgetting it or forgetting my hard drive right. and not being able to bring footage back or not getting my passport on time. So yeah, it was definitely pretty nerve wracking the month beforehand but um yeah i'm really glad i did it it was definitely a really good experience and sometimes i honestly can't believe it actually happened no i feel the same way it almost feels like surreal like i know yeah. it happened but it also went by so quickly that it's just like this weird memory even though it was just a few months ago yeah yeah it's like weird because you get back to your regular life you know going to work and um you know all of that kind of stuff and then you're like wait i had this whole like crazy experience a few months ago and it just it's just so distant from your regular life or so different from your regular li regular life that it's like wait did that actually happen right i know exactly what you mean oh my god seriously the same thing i felt the same thing and the were you having a hard time getting adjusted to the time yeah i was really um are you talking about while we were like got to london or when we got back both because i was forcing myself to go to bed super 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 early and wake up super 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 early so that i would be adjusted when i got there and then when i got back i had a hard time getting back on my regular schedule so i'd be waking up at 5 a.m for no reason at all for like weeks <laughs> i didn't so i didn't try to adjust my schedule beforehand at all I just kind of went into it. I was like, you know, we'll, we'll just see how this goes. Because I had an overnight flight there. Like, I think you had the same thing. Yeah. So I didn't sleep on the plane at all. So I was dead tired the first day. And I fell asleep, like, right on, you know, at normal, you know, midnight London time. So I was good the second day. And then my sleep schedule just kind of went back to my normal U.S. one the second night. So I was super tired the rest of the week. And then the week I got back, I was super jet lagged. Oh, um, like really? I talked about this in another like another one of my videos, but I had a meeting the week I got back and I full on fell asleep in the meeting, like mouth hanging open, hopefully not snoring. <laughs> like I don't think I snore, but oh I it's, like hopefully like, you I weren't drooling. Up, <laughs> I know I'm so like my mouth was hanging open in the middle of this meeting oh and I don't know gosh. if anyone saw me or even noticed, but I just kinda like snapped away and I was like, Oh whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, it was like hard that first week and I didn't realize it was um like how much of it was contributed to jet lag at first yeah well it, it's weird because you it's a it's a five hour time difference for us and it, mm -hmm. you, you think five hours isn't a lot but even now for example it's almost 10 a.m we're just waking up we're just starting our day and a yeah. lot of people in london and england are already they're going home from work you know like it's it's, it's the afternoon yeah. there and that just boggles my mind it doesn't seem like a huge time difference but it really really is oh yeah yeah i think that's that's a lot of what it, what it was because that whole week, I was also falling asleep. Like, I would be watching TV on the couch at, like, 9 or 10 at night. 
and I would just like I could not stay awake to watch TV <laughs> like I would just fall asleep and normally I don't do that like normally I'm like able to stay awake when watching TV at night and then I go to bed and then you know eventually I fall asleep but I was going to sleep so easily that week which was kind of nice but then I was I was really tired the entire week too yeah and the other cool thing was like I thought being in a different country it would be I don't know I thought everything would be weird and different and it really wasn't I mean some of the signs were different obviously getting used to the what do they call it the tube <laughs> the tunnel thing oh the tube <laughs> that was a big adjustment but other than that like everything seemed pretty normal I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was expecting, like, a big culture shock, and it really wasn't. <laughs> oh, I felt the same. I felt the exact same way, because I was, like, thinking that, too. I was like, oh, we're, I'm going to be in London. It's going to feel so different. And, like, I think I – I can't remember if I said it to you or if it was, like, someone else we were walking with, but at one point I was like, this just feels like the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Like, kind of. like, like, obviously, like, some things are different. Like, people drive on the different side of the road. There's – there's like, I'm not trying to say, like, London's – your know, U.K.'s the same as the U.S., but it, it, like, doesn't really feel that different, which I think makes sense – you know, because it's still, like, Western culture. Yeah, it's easy to get adjusted to, I think. Like, I think if I had mm-hmm. to move there tomorrow, it, it would be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I found myself thinking, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I could get adjusted th- adjusted to this pretty easy. Like, I think the driving on the different side of the road thing, hopefully I didn't say wrong side. I don't mean to say wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, driving on the, the other side of the road, um, you know, like, I think that whole thing would um, trip me up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Luckily, I didn't have to do any driving. We didn't even, I mean, we did Uber a little bit, and at some points, I felt like, oh, my gosh, we're going to die because <laughs> you see yeah. a car coming towards you. But it wasn't. Yeah, I think that's something you totally get used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was definitely a bit weird for me. And then also the, the tube. That So what did you, how did you like the tube? Oh, my gosh. That was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. Thank God when we got to the airport, um, Kayla, Lil Simsy, came and met us. And she navigated us through the tube. Otherwise, I don't know. I would have been sitting in the corner crying the entire time. I have no idea how I would have gotten around. <laughs> yeah, I am so thankful that we. I didn't have to try to get to the hotel, hotel by myself. Because um, I was with... So, yeah, because you, you went into Gatwick. Yeah. And then I came into Heathrow. So um, some other people were there around the same time as me. It was um, Julian Iron Seagull. Kristen, um, Kristen Marie XO, um, Steven, Spring Sims, and um, I feel bad. I think there was someone else. I feel bad if I'm, like, forgetting who. I know. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, Nicole. Um, Nick, <laughs> Nick Soul. Nick Soul. Yeah, sorry. I feel bad. No, I know um, the same yeah, thing. So she... I forget one person. I, I tell a whole story, and I leave out one person, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they were all there around the same time as me, so thankfully, I didn't have to figure it out by myself, but... I don't know if you heard about it. I think you did you hear about like the hard time we had getting to the hotel? No, what happened? So we had no clue what we were doing. So there's the Heathrow Express train that runs out of Heathrow, which is really nice, but really expensive. So we spent 40 pounds on a ticket, which is, um, I forget how the conversion works, but I think it's more in, was that more in, would that be more in US or less in US? I think it'd be more. More, I think that's closer yeah. to like $60. Yeah, so we spent sixty U.S. dollars on this train ticket each, and we we spent ten minutes on the train, <laughs> and then it was like the Heathrow Express, and we got it. And I was oh like, oh wow, God. the tube is really nice. <laughs> I thought it was the tube. I was like, this is really nice. I don't know why people complain about the tube. This is great. Like this is better than the metro in the U.S. <laughs> this is really good. And then we got, and then we got to the end of the line, and we're like, wait, we're not anywhere near the hotel, because of someone told us that if you get on this line. You can take it right near the hotel, and then you get off, you walk like 10 minutes. So it, it, we got to the end of the line, we're like, that was 10 minutes. This is not any, like a 10 minute train ride. It's supposed to be like an hour train ride. Yeah. So we knew we weren't anywhere near the hotel, and then we were at this random train station, and we're trying to figure out where we were and how we could get to the hotel. And then we ended up going into the actual tube, and it felt like you're, <laughs> it felt like you're going through into the inferno. <laughs> like it's like you get lower and it gets hotter as you go further into the ground. Yeah. And it goes so fast. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, because we went, I think it was, like, Bakerloo. Did you go on the Bakerloo line at all? I, You know, I don't even know. I just followed people, honestly. Like I said, if I was left to my own devices, I would have been lost. There was a point where the entire group I was with got onto the train, and the door shut and left me behind. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, like, crying, knocking on the window, like, let me back <laughs> in and let me back in. And they're just staring at me. They're putting, like, two fingers up in the air trying to tell me to get off on the second stop. And I'm like, are they telling me peace out? Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. So it's like, they, bye, Steph. 
thank God someone at the front of the train um, got stuck in the door, I guess. Like, it doesn't actually kill you. I thought the door would, like, decapitate you. It doesn't. It just opens. So when it had to open for him, I jumped on real quick. And then the train took off so fast, I fell backwards. I'm grabbing onto people. I grabbed onto Steph Sims in inappropriate places. And she's all screaming, like, he just grabbed me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. (laughs) But we made it. We made it through. But like I said, that was terrifying. That was a terrifying experience. Oh, that's great. I fortunately didn't have that happen, but I definitely had the, like, it takes off and you just get, like, knocked back. Yeah, if you're not hitting onto something brace... or sitting down, you can literally go flying across the train. <laughs> I didn't brace myself at all. And then I just went flying back, and I think I, like, fell into one of the other people. Oh. Well. And then after that, like, I just started, like, bracing myself. You know, like, you get to, like, a low squat position. Yeah. <laughs> and you just kind of, like, clench up all of your muscles in your lower body, and you just hope for the best. <laughs> I mean, it was like a good leg workout, like a good leg and ab workout. You know, you just like clench everything and hope you stay in place. You're like preparing for battle. <laughs> I know. It's like it's literally like, like a battle stance. stance. It's like a fighting stance. Oh my god! I'm gonna fight this train. <laughs> I'm glad it's not a daily thing for me. I couldn't. I could not. I know. I like Even the comfort like, of my car. <laughs> yeah, like I've been on the metro in the U.S. and I mean, there's the metros. I don't know. It's definitely a little rough in places, but I don't know. The the tube was different. Yeah. Because it was like, I don't know, it's just like, I think it's like the same thing, like any, like when you take the metro or whatever, it's like you grab the poles and you could just like, f- like feel the clamminess on your hand, you know, like just like the, <laughs> whatever else is on there. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, um, I'm... that was a whole experience though. So it took us like two hours to get the hotel. Oh my gosh. But you got there on time and everything. I mean, we, we got like a day early, right? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't really, like, a time constraint, but we were just, like, we were so also because all of us had red-eye flights, so we were, and none of us really slept. Yeah. So we're all just, like, really tired. We spent two hours getting the hotel. We we're, like, carrying our luggage up and down stairs, because some points in the tube didn't have um, escalators. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that was rough, too. That was, it was a workout. It really was a workout. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was sweating. Yeah. Like, I, I, have a, I have a Fitbit, like, one of the wrist ones. And it literally, it said I worked out. Like, it was like, you did a you did a running workout or you did, like, some kind of, like, because it auto-registers workouts. So it, like, auto-registered that I did, like, sport. I think it called it sport. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, my Fitbit thought I did a whole workout trying to get to the hotel. Right. It's like we just ran a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was funny, though, because there was one point. Uh, we got down. We had to go down all these stairs, and then we got to an elevator, and then there was an announcement. I was like if you have gone to this point, you've done like 193 steps or something like that. Oh. Maybe not 193, but it was like some number. I remember like, No kidding. <laughs> it was like, no kidding. I felt every one of those steps. Uh, and it, then there's just like all these people behind us, like as we were like carrying our luggage down the steps. I know. People are looking at you like you're crazy if you're not walking fast enough or I know. not standing on the right side to let people pass. Like, I didn't even think about that, but you need to step over to the side so if people are going faster than you, they can like zoom past you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just like slow Americans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we did it. We made it through. It was an amazing experience. The shopping was super fun. We did a lot of shopping because we extended our stay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, us and don't even name names because we're gonna forget people. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, a bunch I don't of us forget anyone. A bunch of us. <laughs> I think it was like five us and five other people. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was really fun because we got to go obviously to Oxford Street and where else did we go? There was like, wasn't there two main shopping areas? Um, I only know Oxford Street. Yeah, I th- we went we, we, we went to another little one. I can't remember what it's called, but um, I think it started with a B, uh, and it had more eclectic shops. So on Oxford there was a lot of big names like Lush and Primark, and then the one we went to had. I don't know, just like little hole in the wall places and a really cool shoe store. And uh, was I with you? I no, maybe not. I think it was just me and Heather. And again, I can't name names because I'm gonna forget somebody. <laughs> Carnaby, I think it was called Carnaby Street. Okay, yeah, I don't think I did that. Yeah, because um, our group split in half. Yeah. The day we went to Oxford Street, so yeah. I was with. I think I was with the other group. Yeah. So we just um, we just stuck on Oxford Street mainly. Yeah. Because remember we went to Primark. Is it Primark or Primark? Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, that place was pretty cool. I'm not really a shopping person, though, so I didn't really buy anything. I did get um, a onesie from my best friend because she's having a baby soon. So I got her that. But other than that, I really didn't buy anything in London. Yeah, I'm not really a big shopper either. I got the bath bombs in a bubble bar from Lush. Yeah. And I also got a shirt that says Dachshund Through the Snow from, from Primark, which I was really happy about. I wore it to Christmas parties and it was a hit. Oh, awesome. Yeah, people were – it had, like, little – um. 
Sorry, my alarm's going off. <laughs> oh, it had um, it had little like little um puffballs on it, so it looked like snow. I don't know. It was, it was a really cool sweater. I got a lot of compliments on it at holiday parties. Oh, that's cute. So I was pretty proud of that purchase. Although I haven't used any of my bath bombs that I bought. Did they make it back in the suitcase? Okay. They did. They actually didn't fall apart at all. I was really worried about that. Yeah, that's what I would have been scared of. And my suitcase was so jam-packed, I don't think I could have fit anything else in there anyway. <laughs> yeah, I shoved mine full. It weighed like 10 pounds more when I got oh to Heathrow to leave than when I um, left from my original airport. <laughs> but it was still underweight, thankfully. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't used them. I don't know. I think I like the idea of having bath bombs. I think I'm sure they're great. I've never used one before, and I'm sure they're great if you use them. But I, I like the idea of having them more than I'm actually going to use them. Same. I went and bought a bunch and because the last, oh, I moved, but um, the last house that I was in had a big garden tub and I Ooh. said I was going to take bath and have bath bombs and I bought bubble bath and I literally didn't take one single bath the whole time I was there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's like the general thing because like a lot of homes, like um, newer homes and stuff, if they have like a master suite, they'll have like a big corner garden tub in them. Yeah. But I feel like people don't use them as much. You Like you say, like you're like, I'm going to buy this house with a nice tub and then you just never use it. Right. That's totally what happened. So <laughs> I have a giant box of bath bombs that are probably just going to sit there forever now because the new place I moved into, the bathtub is tiny. Like, there's no way you could take a bath in there. So I don't know. I'll probably just give them to someone. Is it just like one of those regular, like, shower tub combo things? Yeah, and it's even smaller and shorter because it's in a mobile home. So you feel like you're standing in a tray. <laughs> like, you don't feel like you're in an actual tub. It's maybe, oh. <laughs> maybe four inches, five inches tall. It's very, very short. Okay, yeah, I know the kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, my house doesn't have, like, a – I don't have a fancy garden tub. I just have, like, a regular shower tub combo in one of my bathrooms, but I never use it. Yeah. Because I just use, like, the other bathroom that has, like, the standalone shower. So, like, it never gets used. So I'm like, if I if I want to take a bath and I have to clean it, and I don't feel like cleaning it. Right. <laughs> it just, it just, it's like a, the guest bathroom, so it doesn't really get used, and my cats like to sit in it <laughs> for some reason. So it's like I have to clean all the cat fur out of it if I want to use it, and it's just – I don't – don't feel like bothering with it. No, same. My cats have taken over my bathroom. Like, I can't even use the bathroom. I've got my cat litter in there, and then she sits on the sink and drinks water, so I have to go in the kitchen and wash my hands. Like, she has taken over my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cats tend to do that. They tend to just take over things. Yeah. Mine do that. <laughs> yeah, but they're cute, so we let them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we do. I let my cats get away with a lot. <laughs> I know. Well, they're like I said, they're lucky they're cute. Otherwise, there's no way, but... I know they're so they're so cute (laughs) I know you can't yell at them like people people tell me oh why don't you spray her with a spray bottle or something I'm like no are you kidding me (laughs) like she'll kill me in my sleep (laughs) yeah or they they, like they just look at you with those like those sad disappointed eyes and like why'd you spray me yeah you're like fine you can have the bathtub bye (laughs) (laughs) yep um, I guess I should actually talk about the build a little bit. I mean, we might as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's like we're like 18 minutes into this, and we haven't talked about the build at all. Just a little bit. Um, So I did finish. So um, my half of the street has a clothing store, a toy store, and a cafe. So I just finished the clothing store there. And then now we're starting on the toy store. And with the clothing store, I was trying to go for like a super modern, high-end clothing store kind of a look. Like it was kind of Primark-inspired. Yeah. But I don't think it really, like, does it look kind of Primark-esque to you at all? No, definitely. When I saw it, I was like, wow, this looks amazing. It looks very well put together, almost like a department store combined with a boutique. It doesn't feel like, um, I don't know, it didn't feel cluttered at all. It just felt really nicely put together. It definitely gave me those vibes. Okay, good. Yeah, because that's what I was going for because, like, for the, I was actually struggling with trying to figure out the outside of the build at first, like, just getting this whole thing started And I was going to go for, like, a more traditional look with that at first, but then I saw that one of the Primarks in London had that kind of a thing where they had, like, really tall glass windows and the lower two levels look really modern, and then above that it had, like, the older brick buildings. So that's what I was trying to do with that. I actually did that with all three of the buildings that I have on the street. Yeah, the the architecture was really weird because I guess there's old parts and new parts, so you would see a really super modern building attached to or part of something that's definitely more traditional. Uh, and that was pretty common. I wasn't expecting that at all, but I do like the kind of juxtaposition of both of the styles put together. Yeah, I think it's really, I think it's really cool. And that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't because the part of of um, Oxford Street that we were on, I didn't see that too much because I had pictures that I took and I was using that for my initial inspiration. 
And the part of the street we were on when I took those pictures had more traditional buildings. Yeah. So, but then I feel like it's kind of hard to really fully get that across in this game. Yeah, we we don't have, I don't know, we don't have a lot of building material. It seems like we do, but there's so many things that we don't have. I would love more ornate windows and more um, ornate trims. Like, we have a couple, but... I don't know. I think we need more. I think we definitely need more building stuff, more curved things, more rounded stuff. Yeah, I agree with it. I, I, <laughs> I agree with that. Like, that's something I run into a lot because I was, because I had a lot of, like, very ornate things on Oxford Street. Yeah. And I, like, I was having trouble recreating some of the more traditional aspects. So that's why I just did the whole, like, half modern, half traditional thing. And I only furnished the first two levels of all of my half on the, of the street because, like, I'm not going to sit there and furnish all four levels. Because um, I thought about doing like apartments, but then it was already a lot to just furnish all three of these stores and the two levels of them. Yeah, I'm surprised you because you had what did you have the two store levels, and then I think you built two like fake apartments on top. So I did the same thing on my side, but mm -hmm. I was surprised how. I mean, if we did furnish it, <laughs> that'd be like an so eight much. month collab. <laughs> yeah, or this would be uh, this would be like a an hour and a half long video like mine because mine's already 36 minutes, <laughs> so it would just be way too long. Yeah, but they, they are empty shells pretty much. So if someone did, if someone was really ambition, ambitious and wanted to download these, you could add probably at least 12 apartments on the entire lot if you went through all the buildings. Yeah, but then the issue is figuring out how to get up to the upper levels. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I was going to initially put stairs to the upper levels, but then I didn't. But I, I don't know. When I did the upstairs of mine, I kind of left it not as filled in as the bottom. So I'm sure it'd be easy to finagle some stairs in there if you had to. Yeah, you could probably re rearrange things a little bit because I think, so on the end of mine, the cafe, you might be able to pull off um, adding a stairs a staircase in there if you really want to. But I think with the toy store and the clothing store, it'd be a little bit hard to do that. Yeah. Especially the clothing store because you would completely mess with the whole neat modern look of it. Right. Well, there is that trick where you can actually stack staircases on top of each other. Yeah. So you could do that without really taking away from the space. If someone really wanted to, we're not going to do yeah. it. But <laughs> Yeah, no. No, but there's an idea if you want to make your Sims live on this lot. Yeah. Although my only worry would be that it would get really laggy. Because I don't know if you had issues with this getting laggy or not. Oh my gosh, I actually did. I had so many building bugs. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was my game or the fact that we had so many items on the lot. But things kept disappearing. I would move a wall and the whole display would disappear. I had Ooh. a lot of glitches. Uh, fortunately, I didn't run in, into any too, into too many issues on my side, but that was also before it ended up with a, a bajillion items in it. Yeah, I had the easier side. <laughs> it's always harder going second. Well, actually, it, I don't know. Have you done a lot of collabs like this before? Um, I did a hospital build that was pretty large, but um, that was still smaller than this. I don't like going first because then you have the pressure of like really, you know, stepping up your game because you don't know what the other person's gonna do. Yeah. But then again, it's kind of easier because you have more control of, you mm -hmm. know, you kind of dictate the style and the flow of things and the other person sort of has to match it. So there's pros and cons to it. But yeah, definitely with a big, big build, I think the person that goes first has an advantage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry, but sorry for your poor computer, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh, good luck handling all my items, bless your. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I was fine, but now you have to deal with like the million items I added into the slot. I know, and then I'm like, I'm messaging you in the middle of the night. I'm like, can I delete some of your mannequins? I need a couple of oh, mannequins. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because I, I was a little, um, I was a little selfish with the mannequins, and I added all because I thought you could only have eight at first, and then I was like, oh, I can add two more in. <laughs> I should probably save them for Stephanie. And then you're but like, I kind of nah. want them on my side. <laughs> It's like, I want them on my side, so I'm going to take them. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, I, I don't know which ones to delete. I guess we don't need all these kids. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think I had six adult mannequins, and then I had four kid mannequins. And really, um, I don't know, like, I wasn't really paying. I don't I don't know if you were paying any attention to, like, what's going on on the screen when I was furnishing that. But um, I added the, the last two, and it's kind of, like, afterthought. I was like, oh, I have two more. I'm just going to, like, chuck some kids over here. <laughs> I think so those are the two I deleted. I was like, let's get rid of them. And there's a like, dude standing by the bathroom downstairs. He oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I guess he didn't need to be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get rid of the afterthought kids. I really like the toy store, though. I thought that was super clever. And it's it's fun to see all the items sized up and down and all the different colors. It's really a cute, cute, cute build. Thank you. This part took me the longest. Oh, I bet. I can imagine. Yeah, because I put on all the shelves and I was like, I, I have to fill in all of these. Oh, there's that red thing you were talking about. Can you explain? Yeah, that? yeah, the red shelf. Yeah, do you kind of you can kind of see how I'm using it? 
don't know if you can tell what I'm doing. I'm like, I have it off to the side. I'm like, I have it up to, because I was using the other shelf as a guide for how high I should have it. So it's a, um, it's a mod you install? Yeah, it's a custom content shelf. So if you, if you take it out of your build before you upload it, it won't show up with any custom content in it. But it's just basically a large shelf with a bunch of slots on it. So you can fit stuff onto it. Like stuff will snap to it that won't snap to the regular shelves. So it's just easier for if you do a lot of trying to precisely place things on counters or surfaces. So what about the height? Does it do that weird thing um, where the height only goes into certain slots? Or can you freely move it up and down at you any You can freely notch? move it up and down. Really? I need to get that. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you should. That's why um, that's why I'm using it. Because so you can see what I'm doing here where I'm just filling it up with these little robots. Yeah. And then I'm moving it over because they don't snap to that shelf that I had there. But they'll snap to the red one. So I can snap them all to that and then move them over. It's just easier because I don't have to sit there like tapping nine to raise everything up. This is actually life changing. I think you just changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, serious. I saw, other, I saw other people using it and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they just cut out there. Like I... I showed myself doing all of that for the robots because, you know, I thought, oh, might as well show how I did it. And then with the cars and everything else on here, I was like, nah, don't need to show all of that. <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Like just filling up, moving it over because they won't snap to those shelves. So it's really cool because you can make it so it looks like they're actually sitting on the shelves and they're not floating above it. Yeah, that always... that's my biggest pet peeve is when mm -hmm. something doesn't go exactly where you want it. And then you're sitting there like, do I make it smaller? Do I make it bigger? Do I cut off this guy's legs? Like, what, <laughs> what do you do to make it fit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you, yeah, like you, um have a flower and the flower is just sitting halfway into the surface. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah, it's like you put the little ladybug on it and the ladybug's legs are just kind of in Right, her feet are gone. Or me, I use yeah. my demon child and then his, his legs disappear. I'm like, he has no feet, but you know, he doesn't fit anywhere. <laughs> Wait a minute, demon child? <laughs> yeah, I have a little demon baby. Um, so if you go into buy the bug and you click on the baby, he's actually like this weird doll. It doesn't move or anything. And he's got his arms kind of outstretched and he's got these demonic eyes that when you're far away, they look like they're closed, but the closer you zoom up on him, they pop open. And so people used to troll me with him and put him in all my builds, but now I've just adopted him and he's my child and he goes in all my builds. Although he didn't go in this one. Surprise. Oh, <laughs> the demon baby in somewhere. Yeah, I should have. Dang it. Can you sell him? No. Maybe. Oh. I don't know. It's like an actual baby, but he for, he's an object. He doesn't do anything. So, hmm. Demon, so does that mean you can store. mark? Does that mean you can? I'm gonna try. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> you, you might be able to mark the baby for sale. That would be amazing. And <laughs> just selling my demon children throughout the whole town. <laughs> just like you know, just um, in one corner of your side. I mean, if, if, is your build on the gallery yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Too late. Or too late. Okay, you, you could take it down. You could take it down and sneak the ba demon baby in. Right. <laughs> it's it's not too late. It depends on how many downloads we have. <laughs> yeah. Do you normally like save your builds for after your video comes out? Because I just upload mine. Even my videos coming out two months later, I just leave my builds up there the whole time. I'll do it. Well, because usually when I finish a build, it's right before I, it's like usually a few days before I put the video up. Yeah. So I'll just kind of like, usually when I go to do my fly, like my um, video fly through shots of the build, after I do that and kind of check that I, you know, everything's functional, I'll upload it. So it's usually like a few days before the video goes up. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, mine, I don't know, I tend to bulk record or um, I'll just have content saved and I'll, I'll do the voiceover like in a month when I run out of content. <laughs> so a lot of my builds have already been on the gallery for months. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do that. Yeah, because usually it's like I finish a build. I'm like, okay, this is going to go up as soon as I can get it up. Like I just kind of finish it. Cause also like if I wait too long to record the commentary, then I forgot everything I did. <laughs> That's why and I don't, I don't know what build. to do. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah. I'm just yeah, like, okay, uh, yeah, there we go. That's I think, I think this is a two bedroom house on a lake. I'm not sure. <laughs> There you go. That's that. So that's why you don't talk about that. exactly. That's why I never talk about the build. I don't, don't know what the heck what I built. <laughs> yeah, it's like if I do it. Yeah, if I do it a while later, I'm like, I don't remember why I made this choice. I made like even this. I did this two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, two or three weeks ago. So I don't remember why I made some of the choices I made or like some of what I did. I mean, it's kind of refreshing because like, you can kind of react to yourself. Right. I mean, I'm sure it's fun to go back and look at it. Did you mm -hmm. um? Do you take screenshots at the end, or do you have like a little video? Um, I do video. Video? Okay, cool, yeah. I just did screenshots online, but I don't know. It came out really cute. I didn't, I actually didn't look at it in super, super detail when I looked at your side because I wanted to be surprised, and I love it. I think you did a really good job. 
Aw, thank you. I haven't seen much of your side because you shared a few screenshots with me. So I'm just going to be completely reacting to everything that you did. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm really looking forward. Like, I kind of wanted it that way. Like, I wanted to be surprised because the screenshots you sent me look really awesome. Aw, thank you. Because, yeah, so her side is going to be a bit more whimsical than my side is. Because I definitely, I build more realistically and then you tend to go for more of a whimsical style. Yeah, I mean, I'm a mermaid, so we should probably yeah. address that. I am a mermaid. <laughs> it's on brand. <laughs> Whimsy is on brand. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a human, so, you know, I just I just stick with boring realism. So boring. <laughs> yeah, boring human. <laughs> I'm not a mermaid. That's okay. We can't all be mermaids. <laughs> I know, we can't, but you're a mermaid, so that's great. I'm a mermaid, yeah. At least I tell, I actually call myself a self-proclaimed mermaid. <laughs> Nobody else is like, oh, yeah, she's a mermaid. They're like, okay, that's that weird girl who thinks she's a mermaid. <laughs> I think I like the, the magical pink mermaid hair. Yeah, that's true. I really like your hair. Aww. Like, when I saw it when I saw it at Sims Camp, like, I, well, I mean, you, you popped out. <laughs> yeah, and I was it like, was freshly like, oh. dyed, too, so it was hot, hot pink. Yeah. Normally, it's pastel, mm -hmm. but, yeah, it was, uh, I was the beacon. If anyone ever got lost, they're like, there's Simmerky with her hot pink hair down the road. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that, like, any anytime I kind of lost the group, I was like, Oh, there's Stephanie. I can see her. Like you just you pop out. Like it's awesome. Like I really, I really like your hair. Like I wish I could get away with um, dyeing my hair a hot, like a hot pink or bright color like that. You could. I think you would look good in purple hair. Oh, thank you. I actually had my hair dyed half purple at one point. Really? Oh, that's awesome. I got um, I, I can't remember if it was like balayage or belly. I always mix it up whether it's balayage or balayage. I have you know, no you know idea. what I'm talking about? The word. It's. It's like a hair, it's like the, um... I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what it looks like. Is it like ombre almost, but not really? Yeah, it's it's like ombre, but it's not a harsh line. Yeah. Yeah, it's like where you, um, you kind of, you, you make it stop at different points on your hair, so it looks more natural. Ooh, cute. Yeah, so I got that done, and I had the bottom half of my hair purple. Aww. Which looked really cool, but it faded really quickly. Yeah, that's the thing. Mine fades so fast, but I've dyed it so many times that part of it's just permanently stained pink. <laughs> yeah, that's actually why my icon on YouTube has partially purple hair. I don't know if anyone's noticed that, but it's, be it's because at the time when I got that made, I had that kind of colored hair. Yeah. But now it's just natural because I couldn't keep up with it, but I did get a more natural colored balayage or balayage or whatever it was. <laughs> I feel word. bad like forgetting what it was because I got that done right before I went to Sims Camp. Like I got my hair cut. I got it dyed like that. But it looks natural so it's like not super obvious I think that's dyed. I don't know if it was obvious to you at all. I, you know, I don't know. I don't pay attention too much to hair. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't think any, yeah, it's like not something where anyone's going to Especially those like. subtleties. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm such subtle. a bad person. I, I don't know why. I have no concept of detail like you can ask me right now what my best friend's eye color is and I have I couldn't tell you I don't know <laughs> what color is your best friend's eyes I don't know I have no idea <laughs> blue green brown I have no idea <laughs> hopefully your hopefully your best friend doesn't watch this yeah she she might she might shout oh. out to Steffi <laughs> she she plays the sims I forced her into it um I didn't give her a choice I kept hounding her until she started playing and now she plays with me so, so she might see this and know that you don't know her eye color. Yeah, but she'll totally understand. She knows that okay. I'm an awful friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's your best friend. <laughs> so she knows. She knows. She knows. <laughs> she knows what I'm like. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a mystery. No, no. She won't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, like, I don't think I could really dye my hair like that because I guess for, like, professionalism reasons. Although I don't know if it really matters where I work. Like, no one said anything when I dyed my hair half purple. Yeah. But I think hot pink might be a step too far. <laughs> that might be like, um, what is she doing? <laughs> yeah, my Where boss like might actually. Is? <laughs> yeah, she might be like, so he might. Yeah, he might be like, so Ashley, um, you can dye your hair a little bit, but I think the hot pink is taking it too far. Because <laughs> you know, I, occasionally customers come through, and I don't know what they're gonna like. Um, not like um, store customers, but like people we're doing work for. Yeah, clients. Did I, did I ever tell you like what um like what my job is? No, do you talk about it? Um yeah, so so I'm a mechanical engineer. What exactly is that? So okay, so we got how much time do I have? We've got two minutes. Got two minutes. To try to explain uh this. maybe we'll save it for my video. <laughs> or I can make the video slightly long. I don't know. Well I'll I'll try and we'll see how it goes. And if I fail, then I can we can continue in your video. Three hour video. <laughs> Three hour video. Um I don't know. Basically it's like um engineer you know, you know like you know what engineering is in general yeah so it's kind of like basically 
problem solving. So I like to think of like engineering, the engineering field in general is like problem solving. And there's different dis disciplines within it. So you have a mechanical engineer, which is what I am. You have electrical engineering, computer engineering, materials engineering, it gets into a whole bunch of different kinds. And I like to think that like each type of engineering is like your problem, your problem solver for that specific kind of a thing. Oh, so, okay. so basically like a, a mechanical engineer solves mechanical problems. So, so you're really a lot smart. of, <laughs> I mean, I just got, I just graduated the degree, you know, like you can, that's awesome. You, you can like, you can use, um, like, uh, they have the textbook, textbook solutions. Yeah. That's not the only reason, but I, I did use those to help myself a little bit. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably shouldn't be saying that. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, no. I, I worked hard. I graduated. I, I don't I'm, I'm going off on a weird rant. <laughs> it's the end of the video. It's, it's all That's what apart. happens, right? You're just like, weird yeah. rant. Okay, bye. <laughs> anyway, anyway, just forget all of that. Um, basically, <laughs> basically, no, I worked hard to get my degree. I didn't cheat my way through my degree. <laughs> but, um, but um, yeah, base, so basically, it's, it's like what we do is we'll do modifications for, like, large automation machines. So there's a machine that's already made, and some of what we, some of what we do is, like, the company we do work for will be, like, hey, we're noticing this problem repeatedly with all these machines throughout the country. Can you like find a fix for this? So it's like, oh, this part is always failing. So then you have to look into why it's failing, what you can do to stop it from failing. Like, do we just go for a stronger metal? Do we, how do we um, change this part so it still fits within the machine but solves the issue it's having? Wow. So I haven't done too, like I've done a little bit of that, but then a lot of what I also do is just like the drawings. Um, so you have to do mechanical drawings for the parts that are main stuff. So like I do different stuff, but that's kind of like the gist of what it is. It's just like, you have this problem, how do we solve this? That is super cool. I would have never guessed. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's a neat industry to work in. Um, but anyway, the video actually cut out. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to lengthen a little bit. So there's still video while we're talking. So as usual, I will have a link to download this in the description below. It'll of course be the link to Simarchy or Stephanie's version. That's all finished, not my half finished one. So you can go check that out if you want to download this. There'll be stuff in there on how to find in-game. And uh, yeah, we're going to be continuing this conversation over in Stephanie's video. So if you want to continue to hear us talking to each other, then go over there, watch her half. We'll be continuing this rambling that we've been doing. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and leave this off here. So I hope you'll enjoy the little showcase that I have with the build. And that is going to be all from me. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.